Now today's video is going to be something a little bit different as I give you guys my first impressions on these bad boys right here. Now these were sent to me courtesy of Moza or Moza Racing depending on how you want to say it and we're going to be giving my first impressions on these two essentially saving the full review for a later stage. I want to make sure we kind of you know get some initial thoughts out of the way and I don't want to go into too much detail. I want this to be very raw, very fresh and just what my general gut feeling is so far from using these two products. Now for the video, I've not written a script. This is off the dome. Basically the things that are standing out to me the most will come to my mind, which is what I want here because it's a first impression. So I wanna give you guys what I think of these and then we'll save the more technical script and just you know detailed info for the full review. Now what we have here before you is what is known as the R9 bundle. So we have the R9 V2 motor and then the GS V2P wheelbase and finally the SRP pedals. I also have an extra clutch, which as you can see, I haven't used, I don't use a clutch, I never have. I appreciate that being sent out, but it's not something I'm probably gonna use. And I'm not going to review it because it's not something I have a lot of experience with. I've also got the clamping stuff just to my right here, because as you guys know, I run a desk setup. I'm not on a simulator rig and I'll put some B-roll over this video, but basically let's get into it. Now, one thing I want to note is I don't want to be focused on comparisons too much. I will save those also for the review. However, I will have to use some of them just to kind of give an idea of what we're working with here. And by the way, full disclosure, I have licensed to be completely myself, honest. I'm gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like. So trust me, there'll be plenty of that in both videos. Anyway, let's talk about this, starting off with the wheelbase and the wheel. Um, the first thing that stood out to me and I was blown away by the size. This motor is minute, minuscule. It's a nine nanometer direct drive and it packs an incredible punch for such a small motor. Like I'm genuinely amazed at the experience. I did run it on 100% full feedback on my software. I play F1 in the game, I was running about 70, 75 full speed back strength but yeah for me i've run on a desk setup and it's amazing how good this feels i think on a rig you might want to run a higher full speed back and possibly it might fall a bit short but i can't comment as i only run a desk this wheel product also has a quick release so you pop it and you can split the elements you can switch rims if you want to now overall this is extremely convenient, especially if like myself, you're on a office or desk setup and not on a rig. If you're capped for space, unlike other products, this is extremely efficient. I mean, look, my hand as a reference, you know, it, it's literally really, really good. It's insane how much more detail I felt and texture I felt in the full feedback when driving. Now, wheelbase aside, let's talk about the wheel rim, the GS V2P. So overall, First thing, it's the biggest rim I've ever used. It's extremely wide. It looks wide and in person, it's even wider. Wider than my previous other two wheels. Overall, it feels like a really high quality product. When you just, you know, just feel it, it feels heavy. It feels like something, when you put money into something, it feels worthwhile. Overall, quick release system, very nice, very simple to use. Also, bonus points for a couple of features. Starting off with clutch paddles, genuine clutch paddles, which are very nice and are a nice bonus touch. Also, unlike other wheels, plenty of buttons, which is very handy to have. You can program every single one of these buttons and you can also customize the LED lights on the wheel for the color. You can also increase the brightness of all the buttons. So overall, a decent bit of customizability, which is always a good thing. I'm a big fan personally of the buttons, the input and the spring system in terms of the feeling they have. They feel very responsive, which I really like. The dials for me are okay. Um, they do feel a little bit um, plasticky, but okay. Like I accept it, it's manageable. Overall, it's nice that they're actually not a display thing and it's actually usable and you know you can actually program them. Also, one thing to note for me, the, the big drawback on this, which isn't a big thing, it's fixable, 
hence the rubber bands, the paddle shifters are extremely loud. So right now, if I do this, I'm gonna do a bit of sound work on this because I'm recording on my phone, but basically we have this. You can kind of mute it yourself with a bit of control if you just take it a bit smoother. But generally, now I'm gonna take these off and show you without. Now then, rubber bands off, we have this. And if I try to mute, not bad, but you're really actively trying to be smooth. And when you're driving, you're not really like caressing the power shifter, you're literally, so you have to basically make amends. Now, these were my solution. I believe they do ship with a set of special, you know, just like sticky rubbers which you put on the inputs. You have to basically unscrew this, take it out and you put it in. But my one didn't come with those. Hopefully yours does. Overall though, the driving experience is very nice. I like how this felt just, you know, in your hands when driving. It feels very, very sturdy. So I was running, like I said, with the motor, maximum full speed back 100% on the firmware. I think overall, one thing I noticed, and this could be F1 gaming specific because ultimately F1 is what I play. These two together, in terms of full speed back so far, what I can feel when I'm racing is initial turn in is very sharp, very crisp, very strong. You can feel a punch with the full seatback. It's very resistant. And also once you've turned a fair bit towards the end of the lock, it's also very strong. I find it feels a little bit hollow mid kind of rotation. You know, if you're kind of going through like a, a, a 50, 60 degree corner, this kind of feels a bit okay. You know, like not very strong, but I wouldn't consider it a major drawback. It's just very, small things I've noticed. Overall, for a first impression, this, to me, is a good 8.5 out of 10, possibly a nine. Overall, to set you know this part of the wheel up, very simple, I've got all my clamping system here, but I almost did it without instructions. It's very intuitive and very straightforward. However, there was a big drawback for me on the clamping system. Apologies for the legs, I think there's some leg content there. Anyway, here is, um, the base of the clamp, which has attachments that go either side of it. Uh, there's two of these. So you essentially have a bit of a bridge system. Now, the issue with, you know, what this generates is that basically these dig into your legs. There's no real good way of setting it up. So basically these are gonna be set at a pretty wide angle, which is more or less where your legs naturally sit. Now, Again, I want to preface, I'm on a desk setup. So this was my big hindrance or the big thing that bothered me. Besides the paddle shifters, this was just constantly rubbing against my legs. All of this, doesn't matter how you slice it, if you run them more narrow, more wide, it's always a problem. You can also change the pedal alignment and where you have it set up, again, it doesn't matter. If you have a particular desk chair set up, maybe you might get away with it, but this is my personal experience. Speaking of which, we're gonna talk about these pedals. I have them set up how I like them. I found this was the optimal arrangement for me. The SRP pedals overall, aesthetically very impressive and very easy to assemble. Now I have these plugged or bolted onto a big plank of wood. So basically like all my pedals, the downside being on a desk setup is that when you're running load cell or strong pedals in general, your chair can move. Also, your pedals can move. And in this case, what happens is with these or any pedals, when you smash the brake, this part, the base, will just lift up. Once I've got it set up, luckily and conveniently, using the exact same holes as my Fanatec pedals, which was very convenient for assembly. It works straight away. Very, very simple. I'm personally a big fan of design. I like a nice, long, metallic accelerator pedal. The throttle for me was beautiful. I didn't make any adjustment. The resistance level for my setup on a desk and office chair was perfect. 
really nice. It reminded me of my Thrustmaster pedals, but probably better, a bit smoother. You can customize the throttle trace in the software, the firmware, and overall, I liked it a lot. Let's talk about the brake. Now, this bad boy is very interesting, something which you probably won't come across very often. This is a combination of a non-load cell and a load cell brake, half and half. Very interesting and something which did take a bit of getting used to. The first thing I like so far when using it, it feels very easy to brake. With my, let's say, Fanatec load cell, the brake travel is minuscule and you really have to crush the pedal hard, which is tough to do and your chair can move. This is very easy. This goes you know, down pretty smoothly, has a bit more travel, and it's easier to just brake in general. I prefer the feeling on my foot, how the brake feels in terms of you know the input. It feels more natural to me. However, in-game, in terms of the force feedback and what I feel, I can't fully feel properly what is happening. This is easy, and then that last bit is very hard. And that last bit is where you're modulating the brake and you're really trying to find those margins and you're trying to trail brake and you're trying to rotate the car when braking. Maybe it would be better the other way around. So you would have the load cell in the initial part for the hard braking response time when you know the harder you brake, the quicker the car stops kind of thing. And then the final part, non-load cells, so you can modulate with less resistance and have a bit more flexibility but that might be my personal choice or preference. This did come with the brake accessory kit and I changed onto the red brake spring, which for me, honestly, this was perfect. I kept the original damper rubber the same and I just changed the spring. I went up a step. So the original one is a bit softer than this and this gave me the best feeling. And like I said, the actual feeling of the brake in general, I prefer to my Fanatec or my Thrustmaster, but it doesn't result in performance. And I can't quite figure it out, if that makes sense. So I find my other previous pedals were a bit more intuitive in terms of figuring out how it works. And once I got it figured out, I could get it right. This is still a mystery to me. Yeah, overall, very nice presentation. Very sturdy, everything is, you know, fully metallic, good quality product and it does exactly what you want from it. Now, I want to tie my previous point and kind of summarize it into the whole thing. So this is my first impression overall. The pedals, I would say are eight to 8.5, and this is 8.5 to a nine. I found these very easy to use and anyone could get to grips with these quite easily, especially with, with, with different springs and dampers and everything. The issue is if you're trying to find time or be a fast driver, these can be a little bit complex to understand, especially the brake, where the limit exists. And that's something I do try with lead racing quite a lot. So I struggle to kind of find that balance. Anyway, overall, for all of this, I think 8.5 is very fair. My, like I said, biggest drawbacks, I would say, are the clamping system. The power shifters are way too loud and the brake is a bit of a mystery in terms of optimizing performance. In terms of the biggest pros, size to space ratio, performance in power from the motor, lots of buttons, generally a very nice feeling wheel and it feels like an expensive product in your hands. Very nice throttle, love the pedal. Pedal base overall feels sturdy and you can clamp it on. Lots of screwing options as well to you know, adjust it to your liking. And again, the, the pedal accessory kit is a nice plus. So far, from my first impressions, this overtakes Thrustmaster to me. So if, if you're on a Logitech or you're looking to get into a direct drive or your first wheel period and you want to spend a bit of money, I think this will probably be a, a, a good starting point for you based off what I've experienced so far. In a summary, what I will say is this. I don't know if you're going to be elite level fast with this. Something is missing for me and I can't tell what it is, but it's a very easy wheel to get to speed on, get to grips with and get on very quick pace and you're gonna be extremely competitive and 95% of the time, this will be an upgrade over anything else you already have. If you're looking to kind of, you know, make the step up, this will instantly improve your pace and make you a much better driver. So hopefully this helps. 
Ask your questions down below, guys. I'll have a full review in about a week or two weeks' time down the line. I want to have a bit more time to kind of, you know, get things in detail. I'll do a full-on script, get things in writing. But questions down below, I'll also answer some of those questions in the review. So if there's something specific you want to know, let me know. But yeah, overall, this is what I think so far. And I've got to say I'm very impressed. First time doing one of these, hopefully the video was decently watchable. I don't have an official or proper camera. I'm using my phone for the entire thing. So um, some of the B-roll could be a bit pixelated, a bit lower quality. But anyway, appreciate everyone watching and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Once again, a big, big thank you to Moza or Moza Racing for sending these products out to me for review. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, overall, I've really enjoyed them. And we're still not done. So we're going to keep trying and seeing how they feel. So guys, Cheers for watching, like, subscribe, like I said, comment down below your thoughts, questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, and it's goodbye from me.